Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and I will finally give my in-depth thoughts of the Xbox Summer Showcase 2024. Like I said on a previous video, you gotta get props to Phil Spencer for showcasing games for their console, giving to some reason of why to get an Xbox. But of course, you've been following Microsoft to some extent. They're really pushing that Game Pass that you can play it anywhere. I like the idea, but if you are looking for the perspective of trying to sell that console, why even make that console? I don't know. I mean, for me to, personally, I'm not an Xbox person. I'm a Sony person. But if Sony does the same thing, hey, it is what it is. I mean, if it's beneficial, hey, why not? But before that, I want to give my thoughts on other presentations that happened in the past. I was planning to do this, but I kind of missed the boat. But might as well just do a quick one. First of all, in the past, there was the Xbox Partner Preview, which is technically showing third-party games on the Xbox. So, yeah, they still have third-party games. They do have Japanese games. But to some extent, if you're seeing the direction, mostly you're buying it so you can play those first-party games to some extent. Or because Game Pass is there, but that'll be a different story. So in the Partner Preview, some of the games that they showed that caught my eye, such as Final Fantasy XIV finally out, so now anybody can play. Hopefully it is cross-play, but again, I did play the game, but you know how it goes. Not only you have to buy the game, but you also have to buy the subscription. It is what it is. They also reveal Persona 3 Reload, the expansion pass, more story to it. Yes, for some, they said that the expansion pass was basically based on the content from Persona 3 Fez. It is what it is. What can you do about it? And of course, Tales of Zenkeria, Zao. From what I heard, it's a Metroidvania type game. Some people did say good, but because they were associated with a particular company, unfortunately, the game didn't really sell. And now there's been report that there might be some layoff. Uh, politics, just not really a good thing, but it is what it is. And of course, Capcom been showing this, whether from the Capcom Showcase or their Capcom presentation or whatever. Kinutsu Gami, Path of the Goddess. They show what it is. Looks interesting for a new IP. Of course, the latest presentation, there's a demo, and they will do a collaboration with Okami. That's interesting there. So another thing I want to give my thoughts on are, believe it or not, of course, by now, four Xbox games are multi-platform, Switch and PlayStation 5. And sadly, now some of these games they sell better on the PlayStation 5 than in their own console. Not a really good sign because sooner or later, if it's not working in their own console, they might have to just go third party. But I don't know, man. Phil Spencer probably have something. But like I said, they did show some game that caught my eye. But, you know, you never know. I mean, it could be a Sega Dreamcast situation or it could be still Phil Spencer probably got something. So the four games that was revealed as of right now that... From Microsoft that you can play it on the PlayStation 5. Our first, Pentiment. Unfortunately, from what I heard, that game really didn't do good. Grounded. I played it on Game Pass. First person shooting bug because you're like, you became small like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Okay. Sea of Thieves. I heard it's good. There are a lot of expansions for that game. And like I said, surprisingly, this game sold better on the PlayStation 5 than on the Xbox Series X. So, again, there is some concern about there, but we'll just have to wait and see. And then the biggest one that, unfortunately, if you heard by now, Tango Gameworks was shut down. The reason behind it is kind of BS as of right now. They probably have something about it. Phil Spencer did address it, and yeah, it's kind of bullshit. And then, of course, Sarah Bond. In an interview, you can tell by her face, she really didn't want to say anything about it. She was trying to deflect it, but that is Business 101, and that is Hi-Fi Rush. I played it on the Xbox Game Pass. I can see why people like it. Now it's on PlayStation 5. It could be also on the Switch 2 in the long run, but it isn't unfortunate that went out to the developer behind it, even since Mikami left, but again, what can you do? But as of right now, those are the four games that are on other console and during the summer game fest phil spencer basically announced that there will be more games coming so if they decide to put in 
Indiana Jones and Starfield on the PlayStation 5, and that's all better than the Xbox Series X, there, there is going to be some sort of problem, but again, it is what it is. Now, moving from, is the Xbox Showcase. So I'm going to pick the top three for this one, because it's not really a lot that I was interested in, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Cool. And I'm going to give my thoughts on So the first one that caught my eye, and I did talk about it before, is South of Midnight. Yes, again, you just got to be aware. They are working with a particular consultant group. Make your own decision whether you want to support it or not. But for me, when I saw the game, how the graphics and performance work, it looks interesting. For something that's a cell shade, it can run 60 frame. And there you go. So it's sort of interesting. Story-wise, I have no idea. Is it going to be political? I'm not going to touch it. Like I said, for me, is that really doesn't bother me to some extent unless if the game is really that bad. So the another one that I mentioned before is Mecha Break. So this is like an arena fighter mecha robot battle, kind of like virtual on. So this is from Microsoft. I think it's a first party game from them. But again, please, they have their own virtual on. Because as of right now, there is no virtual on game. I know there's one for the 360 that is backwards compatible. And then, of course, if you have Kiwami 2, Yakuza, you can play the classic virtual on as a mini game. And in the past, there was some rumor that a virtual on collection exclusive for the PlayStation 4. Nothing really happened. But again, hey, you know, it's an alternative for virtual on if you like this type of game. And then I gave my thoughts on this one before. It was first revealed in the state of play. Now on the Microsoft Xbox Showcase, the show gameplay and the graphics. Yeah, the graphic looks good. 60 frame looks better. The model character, good it may be. And fortunately, again, especially with the female, they decided to give them the Buzz Lightyear chin. Again, maybe there's a reason behind it. I'm not going to touch it. If that bothers for someone... Again, it is your choice. Just don't support it. But for me personally, when I saw this game, I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Maybe people will get into it. Maybe they'll start doing Metal Gear Solid game once again. I mean, the last one was Metal Gear Solid 5. Yes, the game is sort of incomplete. Kojima can admit that. But for the game itself, the story and the gameplay, the mechanics, it wasn't really that bad. So... Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta is a remake of the original Metal Gear Solid 3. And, but the voice is going to be the same. Supposed to be an improved mechanic, quality of life, and the graphics there. And then, this one for me, closing. They showed this last. A new Gears of War. So, cool, there's a new Gears of War. For me personally, kind of bum out that it's a prequel. Basically, seven years before Gears of War 1. I rather play as JD Phoenix, so Gears of War 4 and 5. That was actually, believe it or not, I do enjoy more than the previous one, but again, that's just me. But it is what it is. What can you do? So, hopefully, the next Gears of War is going to be a sequel, and maybe they'll bring back a particular character because they got killed, or the other one. You know, if you play Gears of War 5. So, anyway, that is my thoughts for the Xbox Showcase 2024. I have to say, for first party game, they showed a lot. There are some that I'm not interested in, but it might be interesting for others, such as Warcraft, there's Diablo, Doom, Medieval World. There's a lot of it. So they do show a lot because the, the presentation was long. So you got to give props for Phil Spencer that is sort of giving a reason why to support Microsoft. But of course, Game Pass able to play now on a fire tv that's a little bit concerning and his response why tango works and other developing company was shut down really it's like oh man it's not like you're a businessman but it is a business he admitted it that he needs to run a sustainable business yeah it's kind of assy to say that but it is a business like i said before social darwinism survival of the fittest just what happened there so am i excited for some of this game maybe some of them maybe like make a break uh, gears of war metal gear solid 3 is going to be also on playstation and again just we have to wait and see yes they also did a new console a series x digital because they are pushing that remember uh, don't be surprised if it push to shelf they're just they're gonna stick with game pass yeah it may be shitty but what can you do 
Anyway, it was my thought. Proud to Phil Spencer to some extent for what he showed. Again, wait and see what the future of Microsoft. So with that, I'll see you guys later.